What's up guys and welcome to One Take. I'm Gil and today we're talking about The Boys Season 2 Episode 5 titled We Gotta Go Now. This video will of course be full of spoilers through Episode 5, but I haven't read the comics so no spoilers from any future episodes. And there's a lot to talk about this week. Homelander and Stormfront finally join forces, The Deep may be getting back into the game, and Butcher opens up a little bit. We'll jump into all that and more, but first some overall thoughts. I thought the first season was good. This season has been incredible. First off, the pacing has been perfect. They slowed things down a little bit last week so we could focus on character, sort of get reinvested, get an update on where all of their relationships stand, so that everything which follows holds even more emotional weight, and I think we're already seeing that pay off this episode. Even logistically, I feel like they're focusing on all the right things. For me personally, the storyline around the Deep is probably the one I'm least invested in, but they also spend very little time on it. They give us updates on his story throughout the episode, with little glimpses we get on various TV sets. They tell us just enough so we understand where he is, and the show gets him to where he needs to be so that Maeve can approach him at the end of the episode and he's set up for his next step in the storyline. Also emotionally, the show could be over the top and irreverent and funny in a sort of Deadpool way, Sometimes it definitely is, but this season, maybe more than the first season, is so earnest. It takes itself so seriously. Each character has their own struggle, and they're going through their own journey, but they're all tied together in a thematic way. Kimiko, Billy, and Huey have each lost the thing that keeps them going. Billy has lost his wife, Kimiko lost her brother, Huey lost Robin, and now he's also lost Starlight. So each of them are facing this existential struggle of, what am I doing all this for? I feel it for each of them individually. Individually, but I also feel the sum total of it. So the show has just been incredible this season and I'm really enjoying it. Now let's jump into the details, but first, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying these videos, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Every time that subscriber count goes up even by one, it's super helpful for the channel, and for me personally, it's extremely motivating to get the next video done. So if you subscribe, I got news for you, you're an amazing human being. Anyway, let's jump into it. First, let's talk about Homelander. He accidentally kills a child, which gets captured on a cell phone camera, so the whole world starts to turn against him. Backed into a corner, he finally takes up Stormfront on her offer to help. Then, with the help of some memes and fake news, she's able to repair his reputation considerably. Then, towards the end of the episode, they pretty violently consummate their relationship. In last week's review, I mentioned that Homelander really reminds me of Joffrey from Game of Thrones. Just because he has this childlike personality, he takes pleasure in inflicting pain on others, and he's way more powerful than he should be. I also mentioned last week that they've done such a great job of setting up Homelander as a villain, because every time he's on camera, I feel incredibly tense. In this episode, I especially felt it when he showed up at the protest. My heart sank when we saw him laser the whole crowd. I completely fell for it, and and breathed a major sigh of relief when we found out that that was just something he was imagining. But it felt almost like a premonition because I totally buy that Homelander would do something like that. And now that they've put that image in our head, he's just that much scarier a villain. Later when he and Stormfront get together, we see that he starts taking out some of his violent urges on her in a sort of consensual way. And I'd like to believe that they'll keep each other busy, but I have a feeling that they're going to amplify each other and just make things more dangerous for everybody else. I'm also very worried for Homelander's PR person, Ashley, because it seems that Stormfront very quickly has done a much better job in terms of PR than Ashley has, so I think she's even less of an asset to Homelander than she has been. So I feel very tense for her anytime she's around Homelander, and now I feel that even more. Also, I'm curious what Stormfront is after. She clearly has Homelander right where she wants him, and I just don't know what her end goal is. It could be something as simple as she she wants power. She now has Homelander on her side. She seems to be one of the more powerful heroes in the Seven to begin with. So she's getting more and more power. Is that all she wants or does she have a specific endgame in mind? Then we of course have to talk about
about Stormfront's phone call with Sean Ashmore. He's an actor that most people probably recognize from his role as Iceman in the X-Men films. Personally, I first knew him as Jake from the Animorphs, but he's a big enough actor where we know he's going to play a role in these last few episodes. They have announced publicly who he's playing, but for those of you that are more spoiler reverse, I won't talk about that yet. It's hard to tell exactly what they were talking about on the phone, but it seems that he works at a hospital and a 17-year-old was hurt, perhaps as collateral damage to Stormfront. So I think he wanted Stormfront to come and talk to the kid to make him feel better. Also, I use the term collateral damage Damage, but with Stormfront, that doesn't really seem to be a thing because clearly she goes out of her way to hurt people as much as she can. Now let's talk about Maeve. Homelander has forced her relationship with Elena to go public and Maeve wants to take Homelander down because she knows that's the only way she can keep Elena safe. So at the end of the episode, we see that she goes to the deep for help. And here, I think we're setting up for a brawl between the heroes where you'll have Homelander and Stormfront on one side versus Maeve, the Deep, Starlight, and A-Train teaming up against them. And they each have their own reasons for it. Maeve wants to keep Elena safe. Starlight, of course, wants to take down Vought and the Seven entirely. Then A-Train, we know that he's not feeling great about the fact that he was kicked out. On top of that, he has that conversation with Stormfront where she's blatantly racist to him. So if he needs any more reason to hate Stormfront or the Seven, she just handed it to him. Then we know the Deep wants back in with the Seven, but it looks like Maeve is is going to sort of manipulate him or get his help in the ensuing battle against Homelander and Stormfront. Now there is a question mark on where in the brawl Black Noir will fall. Is he on the side of Homelander or the side of Maeve? We'll talk about him a little bit later. This whole internal battle could be pretty interesting because I have to imagine the boys will find themselves in the center of it somehow. It could be a situation where the enemy of the enemy is my friend and maybe Maeve's side will actually have a tense alliance with the boys. So that that would be pretty messy and pretty interesting to watch. I also just have to mention again, one of the things that's working so well for the show this season is the sense of danger. And here's another place where I feel it. When it comes to Maeve and Elena, I feel real fear for Elena because we know what Homelander is capable of. We know how impulsive he can be. And on top of that, I think Stormfront will bring out the worst in him. Let's talk about Starlight a little bit. She tries to investigate Stormfront, doesn't have much luck. In fact, she finds herself in even more danger because Stormfront reveals that she knows Annie is the one who leaked Compound V to the press. Plus, Stormfront gets close and personal with Annie's mother. So I'm very worried for Annie, and I'm worried for her mother because I think it's very possible that Stormfront could threaten her as leverage over Annie. Basically, if you tell people that I'm really Liberty, then your mother is going to be in danger. So I think Starlight's going to feel more and more backed into a corner. She's gonna need help, and I think she's gonna want more help than just Huey. So possibly she'll turn to Maeve and essentially join her in this upcoming battle against Homelander and Stormfront. Now let's talk about Kimiko and Frenchie. This is another area where we get some good payoff from the emotional buildup of the last couple of episodes. Kimiko lost her brother and lost her reason for doing what she does. So directionless, she turns to Sherry to get some assassination work. Frenchie tries one more time to rescue her and essentially gives up. A few thoughts on that. One, I want to just mention the violence because one of the side effects of this show taking itself even more seriously this season is that the violence lands a little bit harder. So when Kimiko Kimiko rips that guy's face off. I like to think of myself as kind of desensitized to TV and film violence, but that moment did make me feel a little bit sick. So well done, I think. Also, the moment towards the end of this storyline where Frenchie tells Kimiko to F off and he essentially gives up, I thought that was a pretty brilliant setup. You had Kimiko emotionally telling Frenchie what she's going through in a sign language that he doesn't understand. So he basically throws his hands up and gives up. To me, this is the equivalent of a drug addict hitting rock bottom. Frenchie realizes he can't help her anymore, so he walks away. Now the ball is in her court, and I think this is setting up for a great emotional payoff, whichever way it goes. And I can see it going a couple of ways. One is she fully immerses herself in the world of assassination, and we essentially lose her. But the other way it could go is that she decides, I do want to pull myself out of this darkness. As Frenchie calls it, I'm going to stop taking this poison. I want to go back to the boys and work with them to do something good for the world, taking down Vought. If it goes that way, then like I said, thanks to this setup, I think it'll be a great emotional payoff. Now let's talk about Black Noir versus the boys. 
First thing I'll say about this is I was totally wrong last week. I predicted that Black Noir was tracking down Butcher because he actually wanted to team up with him. The reason I thought that is because when it was made public that heroes are only heroes because of Compound V, Black Noir seemed to take that pretty hard. We saw him sobbing in the hallway, so I thought he would feel betrayed by Vought and want to go after them. But it seems like his commitment to them is unwavering, and the reason he was going after Butcher is because Giancarlo Esposito's character, Stan, sent him. So I'm pretty curious about the Black Noir character overall. I would love to understand his motivation a little bit more. The feeling I'm getting is that he just has nothing else. He has no personal life, so it's either work for Vought, or he'll be in the same boat as are other characters who have lost the thing they're fighting for. So I think that's why he can feel betrayed by Vought with Compound V, but he'll be in an existential crisis if he loses his mission of working for them. But if we do get the battle between Homelander, Stormfront, and all the other heroes, I could see Black Noir being a sort of wild card. Maybe he'll team up with Homelander because that's the side of Vought, but in the end, could somebody convince him not to be a pawn anymore and maybe save our heroes at the last second? Maybe that feels a little bit too optimistic for that show, but I think it's a possibility. Throughout this episode, we also see that Butcher is very close to giving up. He wants to sacrifice himself to Black Noir to give the others a fighting chance, and there's a lot I liked about this storyline. I love the moment of Huey and M.M. stopping Butcher from going out there and getting himself killed. That could have been a cheesy moment, but I thought it had enough buildup that it felt organic and emotionally really landed for me. One thing I'm really feeling this season is the friendship between all of these characters. I love all of that. Also, we get a little window into Butcher's backstory. We learn from his aunt, Judy, that he had a little brother named Lenny, somebody that at least reminds Judy of Huey. So that tells us a little bit more about why Butcher would latch on to someone like Huey. Anyway, it looks like Black Noir has the upper hand on them until the last second when Butcher reveals that he has blackmail material on Homelander. And then at the end of the episode, when they get away, he tells his dog, who, of course, is the only person he can open up to, but Butcher tells his dog that he's not going to give up, so he's back on board. I love this whole storyline, mainly because Butcher has been this confident, unshakable character. So to see him brought to this point, basically to the brink of suicide, that's a pretty big shift, but I totally bought it. By taking Becca away and taking away his whole reason for fighting, that's the thing that would get him into this position. And I really felt it, but I'm also glad we don't spend it too much time in this low state wallowing. I'm glad that by the end of the episode, he's rededicated to the cause, and I felt that too. So I was with him for this whole emotional journey, and I think it's great setup for wherever we're heading in the last three episodes this season. Anyway, I'll wrap up there by just re-emphasizing how much I'm enjoying this season. The Boys has gone from a show I really like to one I absolutely love. Also, the soundtrack continues to be on point. I loved ending the episode on Aerosmith's Dream On, though I did kind of miss Billy Joel this week, but perhaps they save him for the Huey-centric episodes, so I'm sure we'll get a couple more great Billy Joel songs in these last three episodes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Also, let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode. Are you enjoying the show as much as I am? And where do you think we're heading in the last three episodes this season? Let me know in the comments and we'll keep the conversation going. With that, thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.